All right. Today at the park bench, we have Nick Scarpinato. I met Nick a couple weeks back at a uh, garage band open mic, and he played some original songs, and uh, I knew I had to write with him, and uh, so he is here today. I got to say, Nick was kind of the uh, the influence uh, for this. He was singing the songs up there, and I was like, man, I wish I was in that, that writing room. And uh, we uh, came up with the idea to do this, and uh, yeah, here we are at the park bench. So, Nick, thank you for being here. Matt, thank you. Marco, thank you. Appreciate both of you guys letting me share the bench with y'all and, and uh, share music and thoughts and a little bit of my life. It doesn't even feel like it, it was that long ago that I, that I met you at GarageBand. No, like, it was, I said, it was like right after I got back from my trip to Nashville. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, I had a Wednesday off and, and Grant messaged me about the open mic he was starting. Mm -hmm. And that's when I met you. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. Like I said, it's, it's a big reason we're doing this. So uh, yeah. it's an honor. Uh, so Nick, tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your musical journey. Yeah, well, um, so I... Uh, <laughs> I was born on October 26, 1995, and then right, cut, to tight, guys. Take a <laughs> cut 15 years later. Um, I didn't pick up a guitar until I was about 14 or 15. It was eighth grade for me. I had a buddy at the time. He was my best friend, and he was, between the two of us, he was the leader. So anything that he did or anything we did together, it was his idea, you know, and he kind of, and I, I was the friend that I was like, yeah, okay, absolutely. So <laughs> when he graduated eighth grade, I, we both did, he was like, hey man, I just got a guitar and I want someone to play with, get a guitar. And I was like, oh, okay. And I asked my mom for an acoustic guitar and uh, I could not tell you, like day two, I thought about quitting. I was, I was this close journey. to, it's so tough. Well, I just want to put this out there because I've had a lot of people ask me this, and this yeah. is a really important information if you ever want to start playing guitar. Mm -hmm. Someone gave me some advice along the way, and it was, you know, a lot of people, they have their guitar and they wait every week or every two weeks to play. They right. play for like two hours. The best thing you can do to learn how to play guitar, five 10, 15 minutes a day. Yep. Pick it up every day, and it'll make your life so much easier. So oh, sorry. Yeah. I think no. that's important information for anybody who's watching who maybe doesn't do this and wants to. Yeah. Also, for me, what really helped, because I, I listened to in middle school, I was, a, I was a big heavy metal, like 80s hair metal guy. And for a, a, like a year since I started playing guitar, I thought that I was so afraid to write original music because I thought it had to sound like the seven minute, like master of puppets, like yeah. solo <laughs> and bridge. And, and, uh, and so I, I started learning guitar by just playing riffs. Like I did the Paranoid riff, the Black Sabbath riff. I did Enter Sandman. I did a lot of these, like the snippets of songs. Mm -hmm. And I didn't I didn't bother trying to learn the whole thing um, because I was like, yeah, I'm not that coordinated yet. So I played for a little while, and I was very hesitant to like learn a full song. I was very hesitant to write my first song. I was very hesitant to play my first show. You know, and I don't know if that's how everyone's journey. How about the starts. first time singing oh, with for, playing? Like, that was weird for me. I was, like, by myself yeah. and nervous. I was yeah. like, why is this? I'm <laughs> literally just me. Yeah. But maybe my dog. <laughs> it's, such a, it's such an intimate moment, though, because it's like you're getting to, like, meet for the first time almost, like, a different part of you. Because, yeah. like, some, I, I, always, I always am fascinated when I hear someone singing and then I hear their speaking voice because sometimes they don't match. No, no and it's, they don't. And it's like when you discover that for the first time and when you and when you learn, oh, this is what I sound like when I when I sing, it's very it's almost like meeting a, a different side of you, you know, and it, like you're meeting being introduced to that artistic yeah. side. And uh yeah, so singing and playing for the first time, I was not I was not good. <laughs> um <laughs> None of I us are. sang from the throat, which, you know, as a as a voice teacher now, uh, it all comes from down here. Your diaphragm, your belly, all that power comes from down here. So don't <laughs> sing like this. So you do you lessons? Wanna... I do. That's good information if anybody uh Nick it were so just so you know we're in the Chicagoland area. Mm -hmm. So uh uh, you'll have Nick's uh, information will be down in the bio uh, throughout this entire show. It'll be popping up on the screen so you can find Lisa's Instagram. But yeah. uh, if you need some vocal lessons, yeah. I might be hitting them up. I need some work. Honestly, you know. It's so never I done. Well, that's the beautiful <laughs> thing about music. It's never done. Like, yeah. You can write a great song, but then the next one's coming, and you mm -hmm. can learn how to play that uh, chromatic scale. And yep. It's like, oh, nope, there's another one, and there's a different style. It's like vocally is the same way. Like There's yeah. parts of your voice that unless you work on them and stuff that you might never hear. So yep. uh, just uh, 
give you a nice little plug if you want to yeah. get some students. Uh, <laughs> no, that'd be that'd be great. And, you know, and you gotta you gotta you gotta stay hungry. You gotta always have your ears open for for sounds that you've never heard before. And you, at least for me, I found you always gotta be willing to, you know, for lack of a prettier phrase, you always gotta be willing to steal stuff. You know, you always oh, gotta yeah. be willing to like you hear something that you really like and you put a pin in it and then you meet with like a producer or whatever, you're in your room and you're like, I wanna write something like that. And so sometimes it starts by learning that exact thing. Sometimes for me, I wrote a song because I miss sung it into my phone after hearing it in a jewel and I was like, what song is this? And I sang the melody and of course it didn't come up with anything, but I was like, actually, I could, I could probably turn that into something. And then it became a song it was me misremembering a Counting Crows melody. Well, you know? I think that's music. That's even life too. I think you pick up people, people play things from people along the way yeah. that, you know, same in music. Like, Oh, I like how so-and-so sang that I might give it a shot. Yeah. So speaking about, you know, different influences, who sure. are some of your influences and some of your favorite uh, artists? Uh, you said uh, Metallica. So, mm -hmm. Uh, is that still one of them? Are we going to be writing a heavy metal song today? <laughs> no, hopefully someday, you know, I, I always appreciate artists that, and sometimes it takes being a part of like, uh, Foo Fighters who, you know, they're one of my biggest influence influences. They put out a movie last year, two years ago called studio six, six, six. And it was about this, it was a horror comedy about uh, a haunted studio that they recorded in. And so the plot of the movie was, the, there was a band that got murdered in the house and the band had an album that they were recording. So the Foo Fighters recorded that real life album and they put it out and it's all like screamy metal stuff. Nice. And it was like, if I ever do an, a metal album, it has to be in that like situation where I like, like it. I'm I, doing I it actually have it on vinyl at home. Really? <laughs> record, yeah. uh, it's so good. It's, it's great. Unironically good. Yeah. Um, I honestly have never heard it. So I'm yeah. going to have to put that on the shuffle at the gym when I get done with this. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah. Uh, you have, I know you have some original music out, so, mm -hmm. uh, tell us, uh, what you got out, what kind of projects you have, um, where people can find them, yeah. uh, the easiest, and then any other plans for, for new releases that you might have. Sure. Yeah. So the easiest, easiest way to find stuff that I do is to find me on Instagram, uh, like a lot of folks, a lot of artists and, and art adjacent people. I have in my bio on Instagram a, a link to my link tree. So it's got my Facebook, my Spotify, my Twitch, YouTube. Um, I know you're on Twitch. I love Twitch. <laughs> Twitch I, is so cool. I do play my fair share of video games, and I think I'm kind of funny. So yeah. <laughs> I've often thought of the idea of playing. Honestly. Starting a Twitch and just talking about it because i'm playing anyways yeah kind of no. like this podcast i'm writing songs anyways might as well let the world see it 100 percent. i and i feel like doing twitch as a, as a musician only helps to strengthen your stage banter more mm -hmm. because performing in front of an audience on twitch is the same amount if not more nerve-wracking than playing in front of a live audience because people are a lot more bold behind a screen so like if if they think you suck like they'll let you know <laughs> and then everyone is you know so not to be a pessimist but um, well, yeah I, during COVID I did a couple like uh, at the Miskatonic Brewing we did a like a live stream concert and mm -hmm. I was singing to nobody except yeah. the, the owner and that was weird it's, yeah it's tough like it's you need as an artist you need to have some interaction like yeah. it just it makes it you don't need it but it just makes it more enjoyable right. and more like when people are coming up and asking for you to play songs, interacting with you, that makes it a lot chiller. Yeah. When it's just you and like silence when you're done singing, it's just like, oh. Yeah. Hope you liked it. <laughs> it's it's like trying to it's like trying to burn a fire in a snowstorm, you know? It's like you need that like you need the 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 fuel, you need the wood, you know, you need the audience to be there to like feed off of. Yeah. Not to say that like you couldn't do it and you couldn't do the performance with no audience, but it's like Man, it it gets tough when there's no energy to bounce off of, yeah, and it's 100%. just like you got to bring it, you know. 100%. Um, but yeah, no. So I speaking of that, I I am, um, you know, recording at home. I'm I'm currently working on the a second EP. That's sort of a follow up to my first EP, Golden Part One, mm -hmm. and uh, eventually both parts, and then a couple other songs will turn into a big old album. Um, but you Can't know, wait. Time, yeah. The, 
the timelines are always timelines are always hard to figure out, you know, and do what we can do what we can. So uh, part two should be out hopefully before the end of the summer. And um, other than that, just been writing, recording and uh, going out and and playing. Um, We'll get all those links down there in the bio so you can check those out if you'd like to. Uh, Last question. Is there anything else you would uh, not really a question, but anything else you'd like to add? Any shout outs to anybody in particular? Before we get into the songwriting process sure well first i want to shout out you guys uh matt marco thanks for having me out here and like i know <laughs> we're like 10 minutes in and i'm already like thanks for thanks for having me like it's not done yeah, it could be terrible <laughs> <laughs> we'd have no idea yeah so we got to do this first just to like you know pay our respects and then if it's you know if i suck then people can be like all right well i already know a little bit about him i'm gonna yeah, do now that's why we keep plugging the links so they follow you now right and then feel bad for you <laughs> they don't know follow you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to shout out, uh, my, my lovely family, supportive family. They, um, you know, they, they know I, I do music and they come out to every show that they can. So mom, thank you. Uh, Brian and Papa Howard, uh, happy father's day. Cause this is, you know, father's day is this upcoming weekend. Yeah. And, this will be out um, after father's day. But, yeah. Yeah. But, I know father's day is this weekend. So that, that's a good sentiment. Happy father's day. You know, my dad's been a huge influence on my life and mm-hmm. he's, uh, been extremely supportive of my musical journey as well same yeah. with my mom you know so uh that's great though yeah, happy father's day you'll see this like three weeks after but <laughs> yeah happy but then father's you, day. you can watch it next year's father's day yeah and uh you, you make know. it a ritual <laughs> um and i also want to shout out a couple of people that i'm playing shows with uh shannon edemeyer rifton um, I'm going to be playing with uh, Nestle Child Labor Division uh, next Friday at Ashbury Coffee House again. You know, it's uh, this is the show will be over by then, but you know, you could always check them out. And um, Gray Taxon, producer, collaborator, he records, mixes, plays guitar on most of my stuff, and um, him, him and Lexi are great. Uh, Frankie Paredes, um, fantastic drummer, uh, David Capuciars, Jake Montanez, uh, Justin Corp, they're all helping with Golden Part One and future projects. So, um, you know, once more music comes out, you'll know who, uh, the names behind the recording and you'll, you'll be able to check them out if, if you like it. And, you know, that'll help, uh, let me know that you guys maybe want more. So, um, yeah, I think that's all I got for, for now. Yeah. We'll keep everybody updated as, as these podcasts roll on and get more, more frequent. We'll let you know about artist releases that have come out or coming out the week that the podcast is. So we'll keep everyone up to date on all these artists. If, if, uh, yeah. So I think that's, uh, that's all we have. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. All right. So me and uh, me and Nick had discussed some ideas for songs earlier this week, um, and I think we agreed on one. Uh, Nick, do you want to kind of tell our our listeners what uh, direction we're thinking of going? Yeah. So I wanted to I wanted to tell a story over the course of a, a lifetime, or or splitting up a story into into sections of someone's life um but told through the perspective of of a loved one so in this case you know i'm drawing real life events and experiences from uh my grandpa being uh in and out of the hospital and experiencing health issues and you know for the first time in a really long time uh my family my you know close my immediate family and i were talking about having family meetings and, and thinking about the future. And, and those conversations are never easy. They, they're an inevitability of life, unfortunately. But I feel like there's, there's a beauty in, in passing on, you know, not just in life, but through living life, passing on morals and values and, and, and information to those around you and those who love you and, um, and so I wanted to write a song about about that feeling and, and acknowledging the beauty in seeing a life lived and getting to reflect back on it, you know, at the at the very end, um, and remember, you know, being able to remember that person very influential in your life for for the values that they that they instilled in you. Um, so I have I have a little idea for a verse. Um, if you know, if I can. Yeah, I, I just that I, I when he told me this idea, I was like, yeah, that's that's perfect because yeah. my grandpa has always been a massive influence on my life, even though he's not here anymore. He passed mm-hmm. away a few years back, and uh, you know, every night I feel like he's there with me, and yeah. I've always wanted to write a song about grandpa, and uh, yeah. 
I don't know how well I'll keep it together. <laughs> uh, I always <laughs> said, I was like, I have a bunch of lines and a bunch of songs that I could write, but yeah. I probably can't sing any of them. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll find out how this goes. But uh, yeah, you said you were working on some, some verse ideas, and I just would love to hear where that's at, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. So I, um, yeah, first of all, I want to thank you for, for sharing this, this with me and, and letting us come together um, from, you know, on, on the surface, like similar looking situations, but like with, with, you know, at different stages of it, you know, yeah, and, and I think it's going to, I think it's going to come together very, very nicely. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be a song that means a lot to both of us, which is really important when you're writing a song. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, yeah, especially, especially, a, you know, a co-write, I feel like I'm so bad at co-writing songs because I don't know. I, I put this idea in my head that like, because all of our experiences are so different, it's hard to tap into that and get someone else involved and, and have like a similar vision, but that's not, it's not the case at all. I, I feel like because we've lived these different lives and we have experiences that are, that are close enough, you know, that we can like share with one another and bond over them and, and, um, and write some really beautiful stuff um, that hopefully other people can relate to as well. So it's uh, one thing about life. It's, everyone feels the same emotions. Yeah. No one can come up with an emotion that you probably haven't felt before. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. Very different walks of life, different ways we got certain places, but the emotions that we feel are, are the same. Yeah. Um, so this is. Uh, I'm so excited to hear this. <laughs> this is what I got so far. It's for. Uh, Put my foot on it. Thank you. <laughs> so, so a little windy at the park bench. Just so. a little bit. It was 1 a.m. when the lights went out. I had just come home. Mom and Dad were telling me about how. They couldn't wait for me to meet you I was wrapped up tight laying in your arms Knowing you would fight just to keep me safe from harm I couldn't wait to grow up and be like you so that's, that's what I got and then I think I want to move to like a like an E minor Because I've always liked the like the chromatic like rising back up to yeah that was yeah that was awesome thanks so uh just from what i was hearing from that yeah and i think you kind of mentioned the, the journey uh, through life so we're gonna start this out as a baby yeah i like that idea i think that's great yeah well because i feel like now you know not to not to get too melancholy here but i feel like now i'm at the the end i, I feel like now i'm nearing the last stage of that journey because my my grandpa he's in and out of the hospital and like we've my family and I we've known this for for a couple of years now that there have been there have been health issues and scares and stuff like that so I've been thinking about how to how to process this emotion and this confrontation of being at the end of of someone's life and someone that you like care about and look up to and um you know and so, and so I I wanted to to make it a cathartic journey from the beginning of the song to the end of the song, you know, selfishly for myself, for me, cause I don't know how I'm going to process this. So being able to write it down into a, a song could, could help just to, yeah, I mean, I've been trying to write a song like this for a while. So I'm, I'm a hundred percent on board. Uh, yeah. I'm at a different stage. I'm beyond my grandfather not being here. Yeah. But, uh, he always, you know, he was the kindest man and, you know, every night I play my shows he's there with me yeah and uh you know i i'm do you i have an idea but what do, what do you think we should take this like after this what's like a, a message maybe that we would like to you know focus about um well you know one thing i i have been trying to remind myself and also trying to remind my my family around me is to is to stay is to stay strong because obviously in times like these it's not it's not an easy thing to do Absolutely and not. in that in a lot of scenarios there are people who are able to be strong for others 
and there are folks who are able to be strong in different ways because sometimes being strong looks like embracing your emotions and letting it all out and you know telling yourself it's okay to to cry and it's okay to you know this is my version of being strong is like embracing the grief and embracing it and not just trying to put on a face so that everyone around me is okay and um, that, 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 I got an idea for a line hold on yeah yeah it's and, and it's it's something that I've never I've never talked about before um a lot of my songs are I'll joke with people on <laughs> when I'm on stage I'll say like hey spoiler alert um content warning a lot of these songs are breakup songs <laughs> and I kind of live in that in that world um and uh, and so this is this is different for me. Well, so. well I've noticed, um, you know, just in life, like yeah. those painful moments, mm-hmm. those those emotions hold more over you than when you're good and you're happy. Yeah, because you're not thinking about that kind of stuff. I've noticed some of the hardest I've have. So I I sing a lot of country music, and sure. everyone's like, "You need that drinking song," <laughs> and it's like, I that emotion is just normal. Yeah. You know, it's like when you get these, these, these emotions that come up that are abnormal, that stick with you, mm-hmm. they seem to get the creative juices flowing a lot yeah. more just because it's, it's, it's a burden. And it's like, how do I alleviate that burden? Some people right. it's fitness, some people it's yoga, some people it's you know, poetry, some people yeah. it's writing songs yeah. and you get those emotions out there and you sing them day after day at your shows and they make you feel better. Yeah. It's sort of like confronting those emotions continuously like that first time writing a song and singing it for the first time I feel like it it always hits the hardest you know and then as you get more used to that it's like it's like talking things out continuously you know like when when I tell people like oh I'm an open book like I'll talk about I'll talk about my emotions all day um because it helps me to 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 frame it in a way that's that's easy to understand for someone else it's it makes it easier for me to understand yeah um, so yeah, so what do you, what do you got for the, what do you got? For oh, the, so I wrote down when you said about, about crying and being strong. So yeah. just an idea might be a good bridge line. Be like, cry when you need to be strong when you have to Ooh, I'm gonna yeah, go yeah. do that. And I love the way you structured this. Cause it's very, it should be pretty simple to go into the next. So what I'm thinking is I'm thinking, so it's a, it's a journey, right? And yeah. we've kind of both discussed like, you know, dealing with the potential loss or the loss of a grandparent, right? That with the end of this, it could be you know, kind of more my situation where my grandfather's not here anymore. Yeah. And we're, we're forced to still stick with those or deal with those emotions. Yeah. Um, we know this template is like perfect that you have. Sweet. Sweet. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking this next with what you got this next first, we can start working on maybe discussing like maybe being, you know, 10, 12, 11 and like, yeah, you know, I don't know. I've, I've been at my grandparents' house and fell and hurt myself and oh, yeah. scraped my knee and, um, so I do like the idea, like, let's stay with this, this stay strong thing. Um, so you want to do a pre chorus at all? I think, I think so. Cause I, I like the idea of, of having a section that's semi consistent through all of these, through all of these periods of, of life. Um, so I was thinking for a brief moment, cause the song for the most part is in a, in a major key, which a lot of folks believe to be like, the, like happy keys you know mm-hmm. is like when you when you hear a chord like g major you know i i think like sunshine you yeah know. i think that's a good a good idea here yeah because i mean we could take this very you know a minor key right but it might be a good idea to keep this more of a with the stay strong thing yeah more uplifting like you know dealing with these emotions and and you know taking something positive yeah. away from it. And I think it's important to, to, to acknowledge the bad times too. So I think for a section like a pre-chorus that's so short, if we were to establish like a minor key there very briefly, just to serve as a reminder of like, yeah, times are hard, but, and then the chorus can be the but part where, you know, that's, that's where the stay strong message oh, comes from. I like from. that. I like that. So let's, let's work on a little bit on a second verse right now. Let's get some okay. lyrics down and then we'll step aside and, and figure out how that works with the melody. Cool. Um, so you got the, can you grab your, yeah, Yeah. you can actually, no, you can keep the guitar. Okay. Sure. Oh, that works so much better. Folding All it right. over. It was 1am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
trying to figure out right now how to come into that because I'm, I'm I'm picturing, you know, my, actually my grandfather's backyard. He yeah. used to play kickball and stuff, and uh, I had a lot of cousins and falling and you know, scraping your knee or something. And that hurts. Yeah. And like I can vividly remember my grandpa coming out one time, and you know, he saw it from the kitchen and came mm-hmm. out and and made sure I was all right. I think there's a cool way we can work with that. So maybe. If we used 1 a.m. in the first verse, maybe this could be another like establishing line in the beginning. Like maybe it was like, it was a summer day and the was and the sun was out. Um, we were playing ball and 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 I fell down. Yeah, and then I fell down. Um. And you came running out. Yeah. Uh, and you're using out twice there, but I think that's okay. The sun was out. You came running out to check on me. Or maybe we can use, uh, I don't know if it would, it would change the line at all. You came running out to check all. on me because I had scraped my knee. Oh, that, yeah. That might work with the rhyming scheme there. Well, I like, I like directions and I'm using opposite directions a lot. So maybe so like, I'm going to write down those, those first couple lines really quick. Yeah. It was, it was a summer day and the sun was up. Maybe the sun was up. Uh, we were playing ball and, and I, and I have this idea of using a rhyme scheme with the word day. Like it was a summer day, we're yeah. out at play or something like that, just right mm. off the bat. And then you can change up the rhyming scheme right after. Or yeah. Something. I don't know. It was a summer. It was, it was, uh, it was an afternoon at the end of June, and we were, um, and and we were playing ball, but we had to go in soon. Um, but I was, uh, but I was never. Um, we have the sun was up. We could say, and I fell down. We'll yeah, go play on words there. Yeah, that's why. I, that's why I'm like, how would where would where would the up go? Like, cause it, up and down don't rhyme with each other, and I don't know if there are any synonyms to use in those places. It was a summer day and the sun was up. Um, um, we were playing ball. I fell down. Well, that might be where we can use that rhyme there. We can rhyme a day. We don't yeah. have to about up and down rhyming now. We can rhyme day and something else yeah you know it was a summer day the sun was up we were just uh, trying to play and i fell down yeah we were trying to play but, but i fell down in front of you um I fell down and and i fell down and i felt the and I felt the felt the heat I felt the heat like cut up me cut um. oh what if you said it was a summer day and the sun was out and something stuff fell down yeah you know what I mean so it was a summer day and the sun was out we were um, playing in the back um, I, yeah we were playing out back and I fell down we were playing out back and because uh, then we can come to the rhyme with uh, you were in the kitchen and you ran out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah, now you can say, uh, I was playing and I fell down. Yeah, we were, pl- I was playing in the back. Next- Next thing I knew, I, I would exclude I was to playing in the you know just oh yeah I think so I think I think it's a good time for us to take a second and I just kind of play with these a little bit <laughs> okay so we'll come back with a more uh, updated yeah of this. yeah we got the general idea yeah all right so me and uh, Nick stepped aside like I said before to kind of work on that second verse a little bit we have a good direction and I think we we uh, got it buttoned up um, we're gonna yeah. take that second verse so the first verse was about being a baby now. We're going to be, you know, a young child and uh, go from there. And then, uh, Nick, if you want to just play through really quick and give them what we got. And then yeah. uh, we also came up with uh, a pre-chorus that we're going to we're going to work through. So, right. uh, 
Yeah. Uh, if you want to play that second verse and then yeah. show them what we got, and then if you want to add the the pre-chorus in there, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Absolutely. So it's gonna sound something like this: "We're um, next stage, a next stage of life." So. It was a summer day, I was eight years old Playing in the yard and then I fell down You said, saw me from the kitchen You came running out I scraped my knee and it hurt so bad But like the heroes in my books You were there to save me Stop crying Cause you were right there To tell me now Hopefully we like that pre-chorus I love um, that pre-chorus And we did <laughs> we did change that up from the first one Do you want to play through the first verse and chorus To give them that little switch we have in there Yeah, yeah So um, so first chorus was uh, Or first verse, sorry It was 1am When the lights went out I had just come home, mom and dad would talk. Uh, oh, sorry, mom and dad. Yeah, sorry, we changed that. Told me about. Yeah, because before I was going back and forth between mom and dad were talking about, like I heard in the moment, but as a baby, you don't remember <laughs> any of those. So uh, we changed it to, um, fi- like, uh, what's the word? Committed to. Um, they told me about. Um, so let me actually flip this around, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you don't mind. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, to out Thank you. So, um, it was 1 a.m. when the lights went out. I had just come home, mom and dad told me about. They couldn't wait for me to meet you. I was wrapped up tight, laying in your arms, knowing you would fight just to keep me safe from harm. I couldn't wait to grow up and be like you. Then I cried, but you were right there to tell me. Yeah. And then second verse plays out just a little differently, but yeah, we we I I uh, I've always been a big uh comic book guy <laughs> yeah and i remember being a kid you know he always wanted to be the hero i'm i'll this is kind of a little segue but <laughs> yeah i'll never forget seeing the first spider-man oh yeah i was like 11 years old yeah and i would sit in the back of our conversion van and our trips up to our cabin mm-hmm. and try to figure out how to get bit by a spider <laughs> like i was like is this actually a possibility in my life because i want to be spider-man yeah just so, hoping it's like and radioactive it's, it's kind of and the, the the idea of the second chorus is like you know we see the heroes in the books and on the screens but the heroes are really the people that are around us every single day and, yeah you know sometimes it takes losing that person to realize how significant that hero was in your life yeah um and so that's kind of where we're gonna go with the chorus um sure. you know so uh we're gonna take a moment right now and get that all shored up for you maybe work on a bridge and we'll come back with that for you here in a, sh- in a second. For you, it'll be a second. For us, it'll probably be a little bit of time. <laughs> Just but, uh, a little bit. We'll see you in a second. All right, so we uh, stepped aside, and we worked on a, a little bit more of a uh, framework for the song. Yeah. Um, we're going to play through the whole thing for you. We uh, got a abbreviated bridge, verse three. Uh, what do we call it? A bridge? A bridge, yeah. A bridge or, or a verse, verse, whatever you prefer. Sure. And then... Uh, we came up with a chorus uh, that we think fits this story uh, the best we could uh, do that. And um, I kind of feel like we should just play through it and let them know what we got. Yeah? I feel like they'll like that little bit of a surprise there. You know, they've been sitting here with us, listening to where we're at, and uh, <laughs> we uh, we got her done. So let's, uh, let's just sing through it. Sweet. Well, let me make sure... Nick is carrying a lot of the uh, guitar weight today. <laughs> I am. Uh, it's not that bad. I am going to be singing harmonies with him. Okay. Well, let me. I'm going to mooch off of your paper. Of course. Then to uh, get that last little uh, the verse. Yeah. Okay, and then water goes here. And then, sweet. 
All right. It was 1 a.m. when the lights went out I had just come home, Mom and Dad were telling me about how They couldn't wait for me to meet you I was wrapped up tight, laying in your arms <clears throat> Knowing you would fight Yeah I was wrapped up tight, laying in your arms Knowing you would fight just to keep me safe from harm I couldn't wait to grow up and be like you Then I cried, but you were right there to tell me Don't you ever let the worst of life get the best of you it's okay to let those tears come out If that's what you need to do So stay strong Strong So stay strong Strong It was a summer's day I was eight Playing in the yard and I fell down When you saw me from the kitchen And came running out I scraped my knee and it hurt so bad Like the heroes in my looks You were there to save me Yeah, you saved me I stopped crying Cause you were right there to tell me So don't you ever let the worst of life get the best of you It's okay to let those tears come out But that's what you need to do So stay strong Strong It's been ten years now and that oh, it's been ten years now that you've been gone. I got two kids now and your words live on cause I tell them. Don't you ever let the worst of life get the best of you. It's okay to let those tears come out if that's what you gotta do. So stay strong, strong, stay strong. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the pauses. I, uh, I and the that's used to... uh, the, f the second time we went through it together. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's the song, and I think we're gonna call it "Stay Strong." I think so. And uh, we wanted to, uh, you know, kind of capture that journey. And uh, yeah, and we mentioned before, uh, Nick's grandfather is going through some things. So thoughts and prayers to him. And Thank you, you know, we captured uh, that essence and the journey for both of us. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy with how that went, and um, I'm so excited to work on this. 
and uh, you too. guys will get updates about when this is coming out. I think me and Nick discussed that he's going to release because we have two very different uh, styles of music. We do, but we're both rooted in songwriting, so yeah. that's why we're here. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to write with you. Yeah. Um, Likewise, we have to do it again, whether it's on camera or off camera. <laughs> um, at this point, uh, really, is there anything else that you would like to add? Uh, to say anything else? Uh, like I said before, all of all of uh, my socials as well as uh, Nick's socials will be in the bottom. Uh, there will be a Venmo yeah. um, for for Nick and myself. Um, so this this at the Park Bench podcast is all funded by me, Marco, and uh, Tyler Witt, who is one of our sponsors, uh, Broken Record Music Club. And uh, if you want to support the podcast and help us get you know new mics and maybe a camera that I don't have to use my phone the whole time, <laughs> uh, just uh, Venmo me, and you can put at the Park Bench in the dis- description, and all that money will go to uh, supporting this podcast and the people who have graciously offered their time with me to help make this dream a reality mm-hmm. uh so yeah back to that question i want to give you some time to think about is there anything else you want to add <laughs> well i just i just want to say what a cool concept for not even just not even just a like a, as a musician but hopefully as listeners this is really cool for you guys to kind of see us pull back the curtain a little bit and, and get to hear two songwriters again like matt alluded to from from seemingly different genres but come together and put something together that that feels like it's a lot of both of us you mm-hmm. know and and that's hopefully all all y'all enjoyed that and and it, i know it's been a pleasure and an honor for me to to be asked to yeah, to be, be here you'll be back for sure <laughs> so matt thank you uh marco thanks for holding it down and and you know helping us write this song together and and Absolutely. um yeah no definitely support support at the park bench podcast because this is this is fantastic and there's only going to be better and better musicians coming by to to write songs uh with matt here and and um i look forward to listening to every episode as, as it comes i appreciate out. it uh yeah. thank you um again marco thank you for helping me out and uh nick for being here and uh as always if there's anything you guys want to see more of uh throw it in those comments we will check them and uh Thanks for being at the park bench with us today. You guys have a great uh, rest of your day. My love, my love, how we get so high? You're the only fire that I feel tonight. Light up, rise up, and we touch the night.